The following podcast contains strong language and frank discussions of violence. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, all you little ghoulies out there. <laughs> that was a, a unique one. Thank I haven't you. done that one before. Thank you. Keeping it fresh. Trying my best. Hey, top of the hour. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just send a big old fat juicy shout out mm-hmm. to our peeps in Ireland, <laughs> baby! Yeah! <laughs> Finally. The Ireland. I'm so happy about it. You're chuffed. I'm ecstatic. <laughs> but I am chuffed. Can't it be remiss to not mention the irony of somebody from Ireland actually listening before the episode where you plead with anybody who knows anybody from ireland send this to them (laughs) before that was posted literally like minutes before yeah it is a real irish real uh kick in the ass (laughs) as my grandmother would say or kick in the pants i'm sure she would say other things too she's (laughs) yes i learned all my curse words from my grandmother may she rest in peace (laughs) that's what they're best at she worked in a factory that built parts uh, for like submarines and shit like that. So she was around a bunch of dudes all the time. And let me tell you, she used to come home with some colorful <laughs> phrases. I may or may not have adopted and tweaked a few. I'm sure you've tweaked a few. Oh, I have. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> <laughs> I do what I can. Uh, before we jump into it, we previously recommended uh, the Deep End the documentary about Teal Swan. What a uh, what a piece of work! I mean, yeah, just... to say the least. Yeah. Her and I would no get along, no. Michael. And we referenced the Discovery Plus documentary about Hillsong Church, and my kind of visceral reaction to uh carl lentz oh, yeah. there uh similar similar goings on with teal swan uh i had several heated debates with the tv screen vivid outbursts yeah. i would call them yeah yeah uh it's just yeah something she's a maniac, a maniac and not on, on the floor. floor no okay no right. I saw what you're doing there, and I'm just going to cut you off at the pass because we're not going there with this this chicken. <laughs> not happening. No. She is... I think we all know what that's the international sound for. Someone who is a dangerous psychopath. Yeah. It's uh, a lot of things. Not, not breaking Teal Swan's way with that uh, documentary there. Uh, uh, can I just... Why? Yeah. In the name of whatever it is you believe in, yeah. would she allow these cameras full access to? I'm my pitch is yeah. going. I know I'm getting left to everything that she's doing and just the hatred and vitriol that she spits at people that are the closest to her that have given up everything for her. It m- literally makes her look like a raging psychopath and obviously a cult leader let's yeah. call it for what it is yeah i'm not pussyfooting around okay yeah the uh she had kind of two tactics and they were very obviously deployed in very specific situations as episodes would unfold you're like well she's gonna be a bully here and yeah then she started being a bully yeah. and oh here she's gonna pretend to be meek and like she needs this person and that's exactly what she did and it, it's it's classic stuff wait but what was that list it was like 28 things it was like the oh, uh the the deal breakers list the deal breakers yeah. yeah she it was like you can't have outside family that are not involved in this in our beliefs like yeah and you're then, on 24 7 like crap like that and classic actual gaslighting the term is overused but when the private investigator that they themselves hired to try to build a libel lawsuit she hired a private investigator to prove that she wasn't in a cult and the lady basically was like i'm sorry honey but you are a cult leader like 
uh, oh, they're not deal breakers. They're non-negotiables. Yes, that's, the non-negotiables. That's what they're called. But she literally, they handed this list of non-negotiables, which are basically flashing neon signs of this is cult behavior. Yeah. To the private investigator, they were trying to hope would come up with a result of, yeah, you're not a cult. Um, I, I, how this chick even thinks that she's not, but yeah. if you haven't seen it, definitely definitely give it a watch yeah and we'll make it an official recommends but in similar vein the uh new netflix documentary on the flds and uh oh, andrew garfield action no right well that was the church of latter-day saints Oh, yeah. And that was Under the Banner of Heaven, another mini series. We are on gonna. FX well, did we recommend that yet? We have no. not recommended that okay, one. Okay, I was thinking about that one. I was referring to the Warren Jeffs one. Oh, ew! It's like a keep, keep keep sweet, sweet pray love or pray something. Pray and obey. Ugh! Pray and obey. Fucking this! Are you kidding? Yeah. Gross. We'll make that one an official recommends as well. But if we're uh, we're on we're on kind of a, a... <laughs> we're on like a weird culty we're yeah. going down like a little culty path here yeah cults are ever fascinating to me as evidenced by the one episode or the one story that i told that was about a cult had to be broken into two <laughs> episodes because i just couldn't good old larry greco yeah because i couldn't uh couldn't leave well enough alone but yeah that that kind of stuff has always fascinated me that was kind of my initial favorite subject mm. under the umbrella of true crime was was cults um andrew garfield looks like my friend james yes yeah, or so J- i don't know who's older how old is james i don't over the age of like th- 29 i want to say maybe early 30s james if you're listening and if you're younger than that i'm sorry yeah. i'm terrible at guessing ages i i think early 30s I think Andrew Garfield is similarly. Yeah, aged. so maybe they're right around the same age. So. Maybe they are the same person. You ever they see them in the same be, room? They might be, and time? he's just pulling a fast one. But I don't like to be hoodwinked, as we all know. So well, hopefully if you've never he's seen... not Scooby Dooing me. Yeah. Well, if you were never in the same room with James and Andrew Garfield at the same time, you know, then... oddly enough, I've never been Weird. in the same room with the both of them. So now you've got me thinking. I might yeah. have to text him when we're done. Yeah, so we'll and just make him come clean. Yeah, we'll we'll check on the Spider Man status <laughs> of Joanne's friend, and I guess we'll keep you all updated keep you guys on that updated breaking just news. Just in case he's really him. Yeah, um, but those are two different things. Andrew Garfield in Under the Banner of Heaven, which based on the classic uh, true crime book about murder, in the uh, another offshoot of the Mormon Church. And the new Netflix documentary, Keep Sweet, Pray, and Obey. Gross. About the fundamentalist Church of Latter-day Saints, the Mormons FLDS. Mormons wilding out. <laughs> yeah. For, uh, such a, for a group of people with such a restricted, calming lifestyle, they really fucking wild out. Yeah. And with a strangely uh, cliched kind of, oh, Mormons are always happy and, you know... They have a lot of offshoots that are pretty sinister. Yeah, man. I don't uh, know. No disrespect to Mormons that don't sleep with children. Well, yeah. Oh. <laughs> cut that, cut that, cut that. <laughs> cut that, cut that. <laughs> what do you have for me this week? Um, because there was a show yeah. on about it, and you literally called me up in a frantic panic and were like, did you watch this yet? No. And I'm thinking you're going to be like, okay, Full disclosure, I went ahead and just like watched an episode without you. It's really good. That's not what you said. That you were like, do not watch it. Yeah. I'm going to write a story about it. And I'm like, all right. Yeah. So So now I'm waiting. I have to do this. And then after <laughs> this, I have to then go watch that. Yeah. Well, I haven't watched it either. So I don't know what the show is going to be like. But oh. this week's story was inspired by a show that aired in January back in England. Um on the BBC, but just hit BritBox for us uh, to watch here. Shout out to BritBox. On we BritBox, <laughs> the show is called The Barking Murders. Originally on the BBC, it was called Four Lives. Um, hmm. But this is the story of Stephen Port, the grinder killer. Ooh, sex murder. Stephen Port was born on February 22nd, 1975 in Essex. 
wait when in 1975 you said 222 two, two. your birthday my birthday and my year yes oh my god michael i'm so excited to hear this story if this is the result of what would happen <laughs> if we became a single person this is problematic this is gonna be bad his family moved to east london when he was only a year old and that is where steven spent his entire childhood at school he was consistently bullied for being a quote loner and was always described as quote quiet by teachers hmm, that sounds like one of us yeah even as an adult a neighbor described steven as being peculiar having <laughs> a childlike personality and even saw steven playing with kids toys that's so weird and none of that relates to you in the least i know that you have an entire room full of star wars now that's besides the point steven went to art school <laughs> <laughs> i'm just gonna ignore it's, all of okay that. great Stephen went to art school when he was 16, but it was too expensive for his parents to help with. Uh, so Tell he, me something. Yeah. Sing me a song, yeah. honey. You, can, you hear yeah. that, Julia? <laughs> Sing me a song, honey. So he ended up training for two years as a chef instead. Stephen lived with his parents until he was in his 30s and then finally moved into a flat by himself in Barking. That's which is like a failure to launch there. Yeah. Uh, but the Barking neighborhood is a suburban area in east london mm -hmm. so it's still in london proper but kind of more towards the barking like a barking. dog barking yes okay it was there that he found work as a chef he actually even appeared in an episode of master chef Ooh. stephen was fairly athletic regularly going to the gym but he wasn't very happy about having gone bald kind of prematurely <laughs> I, he you wrote this you wrote this. He procured a blonde toupee <laughs> that oh he had my God, please, professionally please. fastened to boost his confidence. So you couldn't tell that he had a toupee because it was kind of, it wasn't Can't. just a wig. No. Can we? No. Just not a tube, but no. like, can we go to Party City? <laughs> and get what? <laughs> Like a like an Elvis wig, a blonde wig, big sign pompadour, no, just like a shaggy blonde wig, like you know the only kind of shaggy blonde wigs anywhere has now are Trump wigs, and that's not happening. No, no, not like a Trump wig, like a hey bro, like oh, God, check out these gnarly wig? waves, dude, like that, like just a shaggy cat. No, Beef. come on, live uh, a little. I don't know about that. What's interesting about this case is the handling of the various investigations done by police. Mm -hmm. Stephen's crimes are actually pretty frustratingly straightforward in a lot of, <laughs> in a lot of cases okay. here. But a little more backstory before we get to the actual crimes. Stephen came out as gay in his mid-20s and was using dating and hookup apps in 2014 and 2015 to meet potential romantic interests. Dating apps are the worst. I wouldn't know. The worst. Well... I wouldn't know firsthand, but I can just imagine. Um, pretty terrible. He always lied in his bios, pretending to have graduated from Oxford or having served in the Royal Navy, trying to increase his likelihood of a match. Yeah, okay. The first known victim of Stephen Port was a 23-year-old man named Anthony Walgate. Anthony was a fashion student from Hull who sometimes worked as an escort. Stephen contacted Anthony online on june 17th 2014 and offered him 800 pounds for the night whoa geez louise i'm in the wrong business well <laughs> you know they, they 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 could bond over their love of art and creativity yeah you know one late went to art school this one's over here making fashion yeah right oh yeah when the two come together you know could sparks. be a connection sparks Stephen picked up Anthony at the transit station in Barking and brought him back to his flat. Once there, Stephen drugged Anthony with GHB and raped him. Oh, well. Turns out, for a chef, this probably shouldn't have happened, but he got his measurements wrong. No. And Anthony died of an overdose. No. Oh, my God. I thought you were going to say, well, I know it's the Barking murders, but <laughs> for some reason I thought you were going to say, like, he woke up in the middle of it and he had to crack him in the head. But no, he just went right yep. for it. Okay. Shoot. Wait, well, well, did he do it on purpose? I mean. It's possible. He's already raping dudes. He's yeah. drugging and raping dudes. So, I mean, <laughs> what's a what's a murder at that point? Well. I think what he does next... Just put it on my tab. Yeah. Put it on my tab. Yeah. What he does next, though, may kind of mm. answer that question. Uh -oh. 
So this happened on June 17th. It wasn't until June 19th that Stephen dragged Anthony's body to the sidewalk outside his flat oh. and used his own cell phone to call for an ambulance. Okay, but <laughs> they're going to know that he's been dead for two days. He told the emergency operator that he had been driving by and saw a, quote, young boy who collapsed and had had a seizure or was drunk. What? That's... <laughs> in full rigor mortis at this point he then, two days he then went back upstairs to his flat uh, they just let him go they didn't find that suspicious and hello english police man bobbies hello. what are you doing well, that's, um this is just the first body i know but <laughs> he could he should have just said listen i met this guy on grinder i paid him some money which whatever it's sex workers work no stigma. Um, we did a little bit of drugs to get, mm, you know, a little loosey goosey, get in the mood, right? Uh. Getting it in, mm, 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 whatever. And my man here, he went a little crazy, and I think he OD'd. Call nine one one in that moment and go, oh my god, we just were trying to party and it got a little crazy. They're not gonna charge you with murder. Well. They're gonna they're gonna believe that story more than this this mummified man that I literally people probably saw me dragging down the alley and put on the sidewalk. I just saw him collapse. This fresh body that's definitely not been dead for two days. Come on. I mean, perhaps he had the forethought of GHB isn't something that people are giving themselves an ODing on, so it's Bullshit. hard to... Bullshit! You give yourself anything! You There's rape fantasies where people will literally drug themselves and then allow people to do stuff. Like, you could ju- you could claim anything as a fet... You could claim anything as a fetish. Every fucking thing on the planet is a fetish now. So, like, he could have just been like, yeah, man, that's his fetish, but I guess he took too much. I don't know. Well. I don't know. He also... Stephen really didn't have any reason to to worry. Police missed evidence that would have linked Stephen to Anthony's death. <laughs> like his fucking fingerprints all over the body and like his semen inside his canals. Like, hello? But by March 2015, Stephen was convicted of perverting the course of justice only because his story about how he came across Anthony kept changing. Well, yeah. Basically because... just lying to police but nothing to do with lying because he was responsible for the crime or anything. It was just okay, but he reported at that the crime, point, he lied. Wouldn't the cops go, this kid's story keeps suspiciously changing. Mm, I'm going to go out on a limb here and really flex my detective wings, and I'm going to surmise from what's before me that he might know more than he's letting on. Now, that... Is quite a logic leap. I mean, that you can't expect thank you these so police, much. Thank these you. police, to be on on that same kind of that just means a high lot to level. me. Yeah, Thanks. I mean, well, he was sentenced to eight months, but was let out in June, after only three. Okay. And tagged with an ankle monitor. Okay. Well, you can still get people to come to your house on an ankle monitor. You yeah. just really can't leave between. August 2014 and September 2015, which he would have still been wearing the ankle tag at the back end of that, Stephen killed three more men. Oh, that's one way to put it, Mike. Yeah. Jesus. Gabriel Cavari, 22. Daniel Whitworth, 21. Oh, they're all babies. And Jack Taylor, 25. They're all just little bubbles. Yes, they are. Hmm. Gabriel and Daniel were both found in the graveyard of the St. Margaret of Antioch Church. I mean, at least he made an effort. In Barking. I'm sorry. By the same woman on two separate occasions no! while walking no! her dog. Yeah. No! Yeah. <laughs> this poor lady can catch a break. What a trauma. I'm- and then... Another trauma, yep. but it's the exact same trauma. So in your traumatic brain, you're now wondering if you're in some kind of fucking time loop. Yeah. Let's uh, let's repeat that. I mean, at least he made an effort. Yeah. He took us to the grave. It's not funny, Mike. Let's repeat that for the uh, for the cheap seats. Gabriel and Daniel were both found in the graveyard 
of the St. Margaret of Antioch Church in Barking by the same woman on two separate occasions while walking her dog. This poor lady. She's never going to walk that dog again. No. That poor dog is going to be pissing on those indoor pads for the rest of its life. Jack was found in the park next to the graveyard. Well, maybe he got tired of going all the way yeah. in. Nope. Nope. Pun. Nope. I... Nope. Nope. <laughs> Not a you. Not going to do it. Too heavy, easy. heavy sigh. Heavy sigh. I'm going to elevate myself right now. Yeah. I praised your logic. Let's keep it at that Let's, level. I'll yeah. do my best. With Daniel's body, so the second one found in the graveyard, Stephen left a fake suicide note that made it seem like he was the one responsible for Gabriel's death, the first body in the graveyard. Okay. The guilt of that act drove him to suicide. <laughs> has, has anybody tested the note for fingerprints? The note comes up. Okay. Remember the note. Okay. Inquests were done into all of the deaths, and they returned open verdicts. For non-UK listeners, that means that the jury at the inquest finds the death suspicious, but can't make a determination to label the death with any of the verdict options available. Mm -mm. So they can say, we have questions here, but we can't definitively say this was murder, this was suicide, this was any of those kind of labels that are available to them. It basically means that there's genuine doubt about the cause of death. However, the coroner stated that she had, quote, some concerns surrounding Whitworth's death, which have not been answered by the police investigation. The oh, bed sheet... She's got some concerns. Yeah. I've got a laundry list of concerns. The bed sheet that he was found wrapped in was not forensically analyzed. And the bottle of GBL... What is happening? ...which was found near him was also not tested for fingerprints or DNA. What is happening? And that's the coroner saying those things. What is happening? The investigations... Oh boy, these investigations. The bodies of the four men were found in the vicinity of Ports Flat in a period of just over a year, from late summer 2014 through September 2015, Mm -hmm. part of which he was in jail for, and there were no bodies discovered in that jail time. Wow. Yeah. Look how that happens. Anthony, outside his front door... And the other three in or nearby the graveyard, which was nearby his flat as well. The first three victims were initially thought not to have died in suspicious circumstances. How? How? (laughs) Come on. Don't ask me how. I'm telling you, I have no idea. I would have been all over that shit. Like, come, come on, dude. And despite Pink News which is a website that deals with LGBTQ issues specifically, and the police force's own LGBT independent advisory group is correctly that believing... Ac- actually exists? Because yes. why do they exist? There is. Uh, but both this website doing was reporting... Was this the first week that that group yeah, was I, put together? Because... Well, the... I think it was called Honor another brick box mini series that we watched where uh it was about honor killings in the muslim right. community in the uk and they had they presented kind of a, a muslim advisory group well they um, had like a liaison yeah. like if but i mean if, if the lgbtq advisory group didn't pick up that something was a little yeah. amiss well why they, are they a group no they did the the website just doing reporting and this independent advisory group correctly believed that there was a serial murderer at large but the police force told them that the crimes were not connected Uh, okay all right i misunderstood yeah okay well so not only i would have still been like "Mm, but aren't they though not only is just the evidence there that these are connected the news so people who don't have all of the information that the police have in terms of clues evidence all of that are putting it together and saying you know what there's something going on something's here. A, a awry and the group specifically designed to deal with lgbtq issues and make sure their priorities for the cops and not considered the less dead as is often the case we're telling them look into this yeah. and they're like no nah. and they're like there's definitely 
no relation between yeah. these three dead gay men. Four. Four, yeah. who sometimes work as escorts. Yeah. Found in the very close vicinity of this guy's house. Yeah. Who was the one who discovered the first body. Don't you. They are not that. related. No. What are you seeing that no one else is seeing? You're making crazy connections. You want there to be connections. <laughs> yeah. I'm gaslighting you right now. Yeah. You you need to yeah. see connections, and so you're placing connections where there are none, yeah. Michael. Because there couldn't possibly just be evil in the world. It all has to be it, a cabal. You know? I mean, come on. Yeah. It says the people who led the satanic panic in the 80s, probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I was thinking about that when I was watching Stranger Things, yeah. and that was all coming up because, like, you know, that was, like, my time when I was coming up. Like, that was exactly my age, and there was like all this crap on the news about satanic panic and this game dungeons and dragons and they're all in a cult and Mm -hmm. all this dumb shit yeah and but and but then just like bomb ass music in the Uh, 80s but like just watching that like watching it all it all came back and i'm like oh my god that's right i remember how like anybody who listened to metal or like nerds that played D &D were like considered devil worshipers it was the worst yeah most nothing makes you want to worship the devil than being told you worship the devil so I may as well do it why not right might as well in March 2017 a BBC One documentary was broadcast suggesting a quote catalog of police failings and the police's (laughs) response to the deaths oh oh boy I show that one over like a fart in church (laughs) crucial witnesses were not questioned for example Stephen's neighbor who had witnessed him in a dazed state with a large container full of white powder and bottles of clear liquid. <laughs> he made an unexpected visit to his home. Yeah, that's definitely not GBH. It's fine. Maybe he's staying hydrated. Have you ever considered that? Yeah, he's just so hydrated and so full of vitamins that he can't. Maybe he's very keep, health conscious. Yeah, you he, don't know how this man lives behind closed yeah, doors. He can't focus his eyes or form a coherent thought. <laughs> he's just so healthy. The neighbor also reported receiving a suspicious text message from Stephen regarding Gabriel. <laughs> Not oh. questioned. Come No, what was the message? Don't know. No. Speaking of Gabriel. You can't. Come on, dude. <laughs> Come on. I mean, it may have just been, I knew that guy, or something like that. But he should have been questioned, is the point. Yeah. Speaking of Gabriel, his landlord, a fellow named John Pape, searched on the internet for other unexplained deaths in the Barking area. (laughs) And was astonished. When uh, three more popped up. At the similarities of the case of Anthony Walgate. Well, Gabriel was the second known known victim here. This is just the neighbor now cyber sleuthing. This is Gabriel's landlord. Okay. Now. Cyber sleuthing, yes. And at that point... Why is everyone <laughs> figuring this yeah. out except for the cops? Well, Literally everyone is... Fi- yeah. The neighborhood watch is like yeah. figuring this out. And worse for the cops that at the point that the landlord's doing this, there'd only been one previous murder. And he still put it together. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind four. This was just a guy Googling news stories and he put it together. Mm-hmm. He was especially struck by the locations in which the bodies were found being so similar. However, Barking and Dagenham police did not link the two cases. No. They're getting paid too much, I think. Whatever they're getting paid, yeah. it's too much. When the landlord found out about Daniel's death, he called the detective at Barking and Dagenham police and demanded to know whether they thought the please, now three cases were please linked. Please tell me they said unrelated. Just, they were like, you have nothing to worry about, sir. These cases are unrelated. There's definitely not a serial killer on the loose. Well, he wanted to know, if not only were they linked, were th- were these considered murder? As he was concerned for his own personal safety right. at that point, he was assured that they were not linked and they were not murder. They're now, I will remind suspicious. you, the third body was found with a suicide note claiming credit for murdering the second victim. <laughs> so, like, but there's no, murder no murders here. at all? No. He also offered to be interviewed since he felt he might have relevant information regarding Gabriel's last movements. Okay. But no one contacted him in response. (laughs) Wow. 
even after he went to Pink News and had them contact the police on his behalf. So he would they, just be like, hey, I'm a random guy. Yeah, talk yeah. to me. Talk to they, me. They were just like, the news nah. vetted The Pink News vetted him and said, this guy has credible information. You should talk to him. No, no one talked to him. They were like, no, nah, we good. The woman who found Gabriel and Daniel's bodies <laughs> oh, two weeks Jesus. apart in the same location at almost exactly the same position as if they were posed. Oh, you don't say they were staged. Also reported thinking that Barking and Dagenham police, quote, had no idea what they were doing yeah. not to connect the two cases. Yeah, 100% right. And she's just a woman walking her she's dog. She's just a lady with double trauma. Yeah. Yeah. When Daniel's mother was informed of her son's death, third victim, she was told he died of an overdose, but they didn't actually Ooh. investigate the death to know for to know that for sure. Or what kind of overdose it was, self-inflicted or not. They failed to mention to her, or investigate themselves, the bruising under his arms, which most likely pointed to someone else dragging, dragging his him? body yeah. to where it was found. <laughs> yeah, no shit. It's weird that I don't even have to finish the sentence yeah. for you to know where it's going. <laughs> I already know what's But the police see happening. these things and don't... Yeah. Yeah, weird. Police fully believed the suicide note that was found with his body, uncritically. No investigation... <laughs> It was written down. It must be true. Yeah. What if we both suicided? Yeah. But I hated you so much in life that I let you suicide first. And then I still suicided. But I wrote a note <laughs> saying, like, he murdered me <laughs> or, or yeah. whatever. Or I murdered him or yeah. he murdered me. I mean, Just to give you one good last kick in the ass into the afterlife. I mean. <laughs> I might still do that. Doesn't it make sense, yeah. everyone? <laughs> A small piece of the note was sent to Daniel's mother and father. The police wanted them to verify whether it was his handwriting. Although they said they were unsure, it was established at trial that Barking and Dagenham police had taken this as confirmation that it was indeed Daniel's handwriting. (laughs) And they never bothered to submit the note for expert analysis. You couldn't get like a notebook from his house or something that he signed a check or something and or very simple or show more than a scrap of it right to the parents so they could actually compare or take the fact that they said it might be it might not be as maybe proof that you need to dig a little deeper into yeah. this might might not we're talking about a might might not murder yeah so might might not do a little yeah. more of your job when the grieving parents were later shown the entire note Daniel's dad knew right away that it didn't look like something his son could have written. Okay. So having so, more than like one it, word it, to look it, at, right. he knew right away. The couple had also asked whether the police had investigated who was meant by, quote, the guy I was with last night in, <laughs> God! in the suicide note. No! No! I'm not, no. I can't do, no. I can't do it anymore. This is absurd. This is actually <laughs> absurd, and I'm getting, I'm getting mad at you. Yeah, and I, it, you I, didn't do it. I, that, correct. I'm so frustrated. <laughs> this is outrageous. The response was truly, truly, truly outrageous. Yeah, this is real gem territory mm-hmm. here. The response was that it would never be possible to find out all the answers. N- uh, I'm pretty sure it's quite, quite <laughs> possible. Indeed, Ask. nay, I say, Michael, <laughs> almost certainly possible, almost certain, with a hundred percent certainty. It also kind of seems to be their mandate, your cops, to investigate. It's, it's kind of like find out the answers. It's kind of like what you do. Asking about challenging the open verdict or continuing the investigation, Daniel's mother and father encountered what was described as an attitude of quote, "It is what it is. Deal with it." Wow. No, no. Mm-mm. No. No. Yeah. Uh-uh. No. Um, I would be like, I'm going to deal with it by driving my car through the front of each and every one of your houses um, while you're in them. If you don't do your yeah. flipping job. I bet you'll investigate real fast if it happens to your house. Uh, guaranteed. Similarly, Jack's sister... He's the fourth victim. Reported the police simply telling the family, quote, Jack's dead. And accepting the syringe in his pocket 
white powder in his wallet and needle marks on his <laughs> arm as indication that he had sat down by himself and overdosed on drugs. Okay. However, Jack's sister staunchly asserted her brother was very anti-drugs. He wouldn't have done that to himself. I mean... It's... With evidence to the contrary. I mean, we know... I mean, obviously we know this case is a fucking shit show. Yeah. But it's tough because you can say, Michael doesn't do drugs. Right. I'm his best friend. We're around each other a lot. I've never seen him do drugs. It's not in his personality to do drugs. Do I 100% for sure know that you don't go home and do drugs? No, of course not. I mean, yes, I know that you don't. But you... Yeah. You can't really say what people do behind closed doors. Like, you don't really know for sure. So it's always so tough because family always also yeah. want to think the best. Yeah. Unless you're just a raging mess yeah. and no one can deny that you're on drugs. But if you're like a very high functioning, like maybe, you know, doing some shit on the weekends or who knows what, maybe you have a sexual fetish where it does involve drugs or something like You wouldn't tell your mom that. Here's a hypothetical for you. Yeah. You are presented two statements. Mm -hmm. A dead body with needle marks. Mm -hmm. A character witness saying he would never do drugs. Mm -hmm. There should be no needle marks. What do you do? I mean, obviously. You prove I would... or disprove one of those by asking questions. Yeah. Whether you, you believe you, the family or not. You have to go on with it. I'm just saying yeah. it's tough <laughs> yeah. to take the family member going, no, no. Yeah. Because you don't know for sure. You're not right. with somebody 24-7. So prove it. You know? Right. What, where do you get the drugs? Right. That's relevant if he's Let's now dead. Let's check and see if there's yeah. fingerprints on, on the drugs. Yeah. So let's see. Maybe we can find out who sold him the drugs if they if, sold him drugs. Right. Or did he steal them from someone's house? Who knows? Yeah. Because if he did do this to himself <clears throat> and it's not your standard overdose and there's fentanyl in the heroin. Right. You're going to have a lot more dead bodies that you're going to have to be ready for. Right. So even if it is a straight up Just an drug overdose. overdose and the sister says he doesn't do drugs, you still got to find out, does find he out do drugs? Also, where did those drugs come yeah. from? Because it's kind of important. Yeah. She and another sister contacted Barking and Dagenham police 11 days after his death for an update on their investigation and were astonished to discover none was taking place. Well, yeah. They then researched for themselves and came across the three previous cases <laughs> they just jumped on the old google yeah but the police responded by denying once again there was any connection i would have been like have you ever heard of this thing called the internet yeah. a lot it's, of people are saying it's it's really useful you can find out a lot of stuff two weeks after jack's death his sisters convinced police to take them to where his body was found. How bad is it that they had to convince the police to do anything? I know. It was then that they found out about CCTV footage of their brother with another no, man. No. No. <laughs> Nobody thought to check any cameras anywhere. Oh, of course they didn't. What am I saying? They were surprised that they hadn't been notified notified about this massive clue. Yeah. But they were... And the cops were like, oh, we didn't notify you because we didn't fucking know because we yeah. didn't check anything because we just fucking <laughs> went back to the barracks and fucked off for the rest of the night watching videos on YouTube. Now, they were surprised they hadn't been notified, but they were flabbergasted to be told oh, that God. the police were not attempting to identify the other man. No! Oh! Uh, uh, no! <laughs> I'm I've had it! <laughs> I'm losing my voice at this point. Uh, this is, this is, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Yeah. Well, how do these people not, uh, how, how do they have jobs? Well. If I was this fucking bad at my job. You would be promote. well, no, you're not a man. It, well, yeah. I mean, I would still have a job, but nothing would get, nothing would get done ever. Nope. I'm in the wrong fucking business. If you were a man, imagine how little you could do. Oh my god, I could just slack off for the rest of my life. No, you could actively do a bad job and get promoted. Like, look oh, at what are they man. doing? The sisters kept hounding police about the footage. Finally, a sergeant later contacted them to say that upon review, 
The footage showed Jack entering the churchyard with another man. Oh, how benevolent of you to have taken two minutes out of your, what I'm sure is a very busy day to review this video that we've been begging you to do anything on this case and you're like you know come to think of it we did review that oh did oh fucking did you now, oh thank you very much i may be mistaken and if i am mistaken i apologize i do believe though that at least one series of the hit television show 24 hours in police custody <laughs> i love that show though come on does take place at the barking and dagenham police station oh my god does it? so i believe we know what no, goes on does there. it i believe it no may be. it's luton okay isn't it luton it m- might be luton i think it's luton. there I may have been something else that took place at the dagenham station I that i recall like of. dagenham somewhere yeah. but i think that that's but Oh my God, do I love that show. Yeah, it's, a, it's a really good show. It's really good. The sisters requested that the images of the other man be made public to try to help identify him. Seems very logical. We do this all the time in America. Yeah. All the time. The police didn't want to at first. For what? Saying that they did not normally do that. Oh, who gives a shit? But eventually gave in, and two days later, Stephen was identified from the images and arrested. <laughs> so the sister's persistence is what finally got, got him some identified. justice. Yeah. Finally, in 2015, Stephen was charged with four counts of murder and four of administering a poison. But at the Old Bailey in June 2016, prosecutors added six more counts of administering a poison, seven charges of rape, and four of sexual assault. Ooh, he was busy. Yes. Didn't obviously always kill them, but a lot more victims out there at least of his sexual assaults and rapes on november 24th 2016 stephen was convicted of the assaults by penetration rapes and murders of anthony walgate gabriel Cavari, daniel whitworth and jack taylor as well as the rapes of three other men he drugged and 10 counts of administering a substance with intent oh my gosh and for sexual assaults Stephen Port was sentenced to life in prison. It's a real piece of shit. With a whole life order, which is the equivalent of life without parole, parole yeah. in America. He is serving his time in Belmarsh Prison. In August 2018, Stephen lodged an appeal against his murder convictions, but by November 2018, that appeal was rejected. I mean... <laughs> I mean, that would have just been the hugest blunder. Yeah. Oh, let's appeal. And then he just get, goes free. It's if you a, had said that right now, yeah. I would have believed it. Yeah. And I would have just kicked you out of my house yeah. and been like, I don't even want to, don't text me, don't call me until next week. I don't want to see you yeah. because you've now just driven me over an edge that I can't come back from. So I would have believed it though. Yep. Yeah. With the way this is all gone. Oh my God. It's not out of the realm of possibilities. Yeah. In this particular story. But luckily, the preponderance of evidence was such that... Kind of after, overwhelming. Yeah, after he had been caught by basically the public. Yeah. All of that evidence sure looks pretty damning. He's on video. While it's all being collected... Eh, it's fine, whatever. Mike. Come yeah. on. Let a guy live a little. You know? Have uh, you fun. You and your prudish Victorian ways, well. Mike. It's you really, know, loosen up, man. Really puritanical. <laughs> like, oh my God. This guy's a real piece of work. <laughs> Following the conviction, the Independent Police Complaints Commission opened an investigation into whether 17 police officers should face disciplinary action yeah. yes. for duffing this so badly. Yes. As of <laughs> November 2017... This was expected to be completed in spring 2018, but not made public until after a verdict in a new joint inquest on all four deaths was completed. Okay. Complicated timeline. Uh, The inquest on Gabriel and Daniel later quashed. Not sure why. Okay. I guess the original rulings were satisfactory. I don't know. The families have also opened a civil claim against the Metropolitan Police. Yes, please. Yes. Yes. 
bolstering the claims of the families. It was revealed that police identified Stephen as, quote, a significant witness subject to a rape allegation hours after his first victim was found dead. Oof. Someone accused him of rape. Yeah. And they still hours did, later not, did not. And, and they're like, wait a minute, that's the same guy this who. Dead body found who had the been dead raped. Bo- quote, yeah. Air quotes. Found yeah. the dead body. Right. Who had also been raped and is. And this guy dead. is saying yeah. he committed a sexual assault on him, yeah. but I guess we'll just let it go. Yeah. Still, they didn't connect the dots. Cool. In July 2020. It was announced that a fresh inquiry was set to take place in January 2021 to examine all four deaths and probe into any police failings. COVID delayed it, but it was eventually ruled that fundamental failings by the Metropolitan Police in the investigation into the deaths, quote, probably contributed to three of the four deaths. Um, I, let the record reflect. It's not probably. It's most certainly. Thank you. Um, by the way, if I ever <laughs> did go to court for anything... I'm going to be one of those people that leans into the microphone and then just answers in short, clipped sentences. Well, please also <laughs> have random Amber Heard at level outbursts and I, then go back to... I, you're t- who are you talking yeah. to? <laughs> are you like, do you don't have to encourage me to have outbursts. Your dog stepped on a bee. My dog stepped on a bee. <laughs> I know. I know. And then um, I would just like to clarify my dog stepped on a yeah. bee. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know if anyone here has a dog um, or if your dog has ever stepped on a bee before. It's very traumatizing. (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to be that that asshole that's just just so infuriating. I've got a nice quote from the jury at the inquest. The jury (laughs) said, quote, we believe that there were fundamental failings in the, these investigations from the beginning. Yes. Which we think were at a basic level. Yes. Thank which you. Implicitly <laughs> impacted the investigation at its starting point. Yes. <laughs> implicitly. Not possibly. <laughs> Absolutely fucking certain. The quote continues The fact that basic lines of inquiry were not followed led to inadequate investigation and ultimately left questions unanswered. Yes. Even after this many opportunities presented themselves to track back and correct objectives missing, this was not conducted. The only thing he didn't do was walk into the police station and go, hi, I'm your serial rapist murderer. Yeah. That's literally the only thing that didn't happen. Yeah. And And at that point, they'd probably be like, ah, you crazy kids, get Hey, get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Leave us be. We're, we're really busy. Uh, I didn't include this in the actual story itself. I said the original investigation was going to involve somewhere around 17 officers. Mm-hmm. Uh, the number may be incorrect, but I believe at the time the investigation was starting, 13 of them had been promoted. What? With this kind of... How are out- they getting promoted yeah. when they're being investigated for... Well, they had been promoted since the time of this botched investigation and the inquest starting again. Okay, all so right. So having this... I was going to say, yeah. if the inquest is starting and then they get fucking promoted, I mean, that's some shady yeah. business. Well, so that was the story of Stephen Port, also known as the Grinder Killer. Well, Michael, uh, stay off a of grinder, first of all, I guess, unless you want to get killed or Tinder. Or uh, any of those, like, hookup sites. Is yeah. that what the kids are calling them these days? <laughs> uh, hookup applications on your phone? I do have one more final aside to this story. Oh, no. Mike, I swear to God. What? In 2019. Yes. Gerald Matovu, who was known to have supplied Stephen with the GHB used in the killings, was arrested and later convicted of the murder of actor and businessman Eric Michaels. He was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum term of 31 years. Using similar methods to Stephen, Matovu had targeted Michaels on Grindr and had given him a fatal dose of GHB. Are they like friends or something? I mean, he supplied the GHB to Stephen. So you think he taught him how to do it? Like he was like, yo, man, you should... You ever try knocking someone out with GHB and it's then just it's having oddly... your way with them? And he was like, no, what should I do? And he's like, here's what you do. And then he told him what yeah, to do. It's oddly similar. That is so gross. Um, Dude, this is like why I want to meet somebody, but like, do I? No. <laughs> because. 
And I mean, I would be remiss. Like, you, you can't even go on a date. Probably end up fucking dead. Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah. Ugh, I'm gonna die alone. Well, just because I'm me, and it turns out that uh, Eric was an actor. I was wondering if I'm supposed to recognize who no. he is. Okay. Because uh, I I didn't unfortunately. He has four credits. The first was in something from 2011 called First the Bird Fell. Um, but then he started appearing in things in very small roles, but things that you've definitely heard of. Skyfall, the James Bond yeah. film. As I think that's the only James Bond film I've seen in the last like 20 years. It's one of the better ones, but he was credited as cocktail party guest. Ah. He was in World War Z. Ooh, I as actually love that movie. Watched it. Staff Sergeant James. Last summer. Would have been better if Fincher was allowed to direct it like he was supposed to, but you get what you get. <laughs> and his final credit came in 2014 for Jack Ryan Shadow Recruit as Never FBI operative. Never saw it. So, yeah. Um, just because you catch one doesn't mean... Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, if, uh, if a guy tries to to roofie you basically track down his supplier because he's doing the same shit it's not the greatest situation no it sure isn't Mm -mm. Um, but now we can go watch this miniseries which has Stephen Merchant portraying Stephen Port who I have such a weird crush on I really do I don't know what it is I just think he's hilarious the Ogmeister yeah, Augie, Augie, Augie. Oi, 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 oi. <laughs> uh, he is just hysterical. I, just, his face makes me laugh. That sounds mean. I'm not, not like in a bad way. Yeah. I just, he's so, you know what I mean. You there's see some, him and anticipate There's some hilarious. comedians that yeah. just the faces that they make or don't make can Kate, make you laugh. Uh, Kate McKinnon. Yeah. So, <laughs> Kate McKinnon. <laughs> Kate McKinnon, if you ever listen to the podcast, please call me. Oh, I should oh, also I say that... I love her so much. That Teal Swan is a Kate McKinnon character. Um, If Kate like her voice McKinnon so doesn't... Good. Somehow, I know she left the show, SNL, yeah. right? But I feel like the best way to leave a show is to come back for the <laughs> opening show when it comes back. Um, If she doesn't just come back and do a Teal Swan like cameo character... Yeah. I mean, that's like comedy gold. Just that's a missed opportunity yeah. because it's there's, so. There's a lot of footage in the show. There's so much material. Well, there's a lot of like, footage in the show that's just her her talking, and you don't see her at the same time. It's other B-roll, or it's looking at other people and yeah. their reaction to hearing Teal talk. So especially when you don't see her, and Kate McKinnon could obviously pull off looking like her too. Oh my god. But especially just the voice, if you've never heard Teal Swan's voice, it sounds like Kate McKinnon not really trying to put on any yeah. sort of character. It yeah. sounds like her just exaggerating yeah. herself in a lot of ways. So it's if she uh, doesn't play her eventually, it's a missed opportunity. I don't even think she has a Twitter because I would definitely be following her, but like I gotta find out a way to like somehow tag her somewhere and be like, you should definitely do this. Yeah. Oh my god! Imagine if she does it. That'd be dope. It would be a hundred percent our idea. Um. Well, Stephen Merchant. Yeah. <laughs> if you ever want to go on a date, let me know. Please don't roofie me and then kill me. Uh. I mean, at this point. Well, maybe you'll change your tune after you see him with the toupee and and everything, because I think he he yeah. goes bald. In Good. This with uh with the toupee i can't wait so. to watch it yeah like i don't know so if anybody uh has brit box you want to check it out if it is if you are on brit box it is called the barking murders but the original title is four lives uh for the four victims so check it out we'll post it as a recommends if it turns out to be uh, it's gonna turn out to be good i mean it's Stephen merchant my future ex-husband don't yeah. <laughs> you even try it and, and um, he's so tall and you're so short it you know how fucking ridiculous i would look like his baby child yeah. anyway follow us on our socials yep. at maf podcast show on instagram and twitter you can email us at maf podcast show at gmail.com michael loves the extra work <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's all there is to as that. you can tell and uh, we have our YouTube channel as well. And hopefully in the very, very near future, mm. perhaps in one week time from you listening to this, uh, we will have a 
episode uh, video we'll episode see. of the podcast. We'll see. Hopefully. We'll see. All of a sudden, you're getting brave now. You want to do a video for it? Well, let's do it. Let's no. do it. This is 100% <laughs> because Joanne wants to do it. Stop. And I told you never to bring that up. Well, I'll stop the recording and we can deal with that, <laughs> that betrayal. <laughs> Uh, have a great week, everybody. Until then, stay off them damn dating apps. Goodbye. Goodbye. But also, kind of go on the dating apps if you're lonely like me. And uh, drop us a line. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>